My name is Sander van der Burg and I work for Wageningen University Research Center, uh, situated in the Netherlands. And we do a lot of research on, on aquaculture. And that's, uh, that's what brings me here, the, the possibility to combine aquaculture with offshore wind development. And we work together with companies, uh, with government, with NGOs to investigate possibilities for aquaculture. Well, the Mariba project builds upon earlier Ocean of Tomorrow research projects. One of them was Mermaid. And in the Mermaid project, we went through a participatory design process with different stakeholders to uh, identify the most feasible combinations. For the North Sea area, we uh, ended up with the mussel aquaculture in the offshore wind parks as being the most promising uh, combination. The Mermaid project already did some economic calculations on that. It was a social cost benefit analysis, which showed the potential of this combination. And in Mariba, we had the opportunity to elaborate that and, and go into more detail uh, in the financial uh, feasibility, but also the risk assessment. Yeah, so in this combination of mussel agriculture and offshore wind, um, we have focused on the existing and the newly planned offshore wind parks in the North Sea. They use bottom fixed uh, uh, foundations. So that's an existing technology, it's, it's proven. The aquaculture um, is new, so they are experiencing with mussel seed collection, but those uh, take place in the Wadden Sea in North Netherlands. We are investigating the possibilities to go to, to the North Sea, and for that we need uh, long lines uh, that are attached to anchors, concrete blocks that keep in place. So we're not talking about uh, attaching the long lines to the wind turbines, that's not a feasible uh, solution. It's multi-use of space. Well, we plan to build the agriculture facilities within the wind park, but not attached to the wind turbines. So it's a multi-use of space idea. The benefits are that they, they can the two sectors can share operation and maintenance. And another benefit, a benefit for the wind sector is that the mussel aquaculture system uh, makes the wind park less access accessible to other vessels. So the fisheries, they, uh, starting this year, the fisheries can access the wind parks. Well, if you have large mussel farms, that becomes more difficult and you can reduce the risk of collisions. Well, it, in this, uh, this case, it's a good idea to combine them because the muscle sector has a uh, uh, the muscle sector has a problem, which is that they need to collect muscle seed. They do that in the Wallensee area nowadays, but they have to collect more muscle seed offshore. For this, they need a good uh, and safe operating space, and the wind turbine in the wind park area can provide that particular space. We have done tests already which show that there is sufficient muscle seed in these areas that you can collect it and that, it is a, that there is a good business case for offshore muscle seed collection. Well, we're particularly looking at the combination uh, that includes seaweed cultivation because the system, the system for seaweed growing and for muscle aquaculture is quite comparable. So that's the, uh, the most valuable comparison for us. They use long lines as well that are attached to anchors and, and concrete blocks. Well, the human resource challenge is, is uh, quite large in this case, and I think we haven't worked on that enough yet. We don't have the muscle companies on board, um, but we do know that they have very different culture than the wind park operators. Um, also, the muscle companies are uh, nowadays working in the estuaries. That's their, uh, they have their business in the estuaries where they can do good business. They use old vessels. And we haven't been able to convince them that offshore operations are uh, that interesting. For them, the current operation is, is interesting enough. And if, if offshore operations are to 
to develop. Uh, we either need a risk-taking individual from the current companies or a new company, a new individual that sees and recognizes the opportunities. Yeah, we haven't been uh, communicating with end users in this particular combination because the electricity is just it's sold to the grid like any offshore wind park and the mussels will probably also be sold to the uh, via the conventional retail channels so you can think of uh, of ways to make this a more interesting product uh, the sustainable north sea mussel but that's something that we have to investigate in more detail I if consumers are really interested in that uh, in such a label. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, we started with this uh, mermaid data, which was uh, concise, so there are a few numbers, uh, and the Mariba project allowed us to go into detail. So we could d uh, discuss it with, uh, with the experts in offshore wind technology, discuss it with the experts in operation and maintenance, and we are now have a far more uh, elaborate view on the uh, on the financials so we know much better what is feasible and what is not feasible uh, but we also have a, a detailed risk assessment that we didn't have before yeah this is where our combination is a bit different than the the other uh, combinations because we don't have a company on board yet uh, we are in touch with various companies muscle uh, companies in the Netherlands who are thinking about going offshore um, and I think the, the Mariba data helps, it's convincing for them so they are interested um, it should give them the opportunity to attract investment for, uh, from other sources the interesting thing is that with the Dutch government is really interested in this combination as well so they want to uh, stimulate the development of a multi-use of space concept so they are looking at uh, the sector and at the research institutes. As a research institute, we are interested in this combination. We think that there's potential. So what's missing is the sector. And some uh, companies are interested, but we, uh, well, we need something extra to, uh, to get them enthusiastic about the investment that is needed and, and, and the risks that are involved. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a first step in bridging that gap, yes. Because we have much better data, um, much more detailed financials and risk assessment. So it will help, uh, but it's a step. So what's also needed is, is more trust between the muscle uh, companies and the Dutch government and research institutes. And that's something that we have to work on in the coming, uh, coming months, coming years. Yes, it's, it's very beneficial. It's good to see other combinations and talk to people who are working on these combinations, learn from their experiences. It's also relevant and, and good to see how people struggle with commercialization of, of their multi-use concepts and, and some of them are much further than we are. So they, uh, we can learn from them. So that's a very pleasant uh, uh, event, uh, learnful, ev yeah, a valuable event. Thanks for welcoming me, it's good to be uh, present in Brussels. Well, my, my main take home message is that, that the results from the Mariba project really show the potential of mussel agriculture in the offshore wind parks. So it's really a pity if, if nobody steps in and we have to work on that. We know the government's interested, we know the research institutes have a lot of knowledge on mussel agriculture. So we really need this, this, the third pillar, the businesses to uh, to take the next step.